you watch the red light and it's up there. Oh. And then it's recording. I think this will be fine. It's a little up to the right of the cross, but that's centered, I think. Mm. If we're a little off, maybe, in a hurry. Oh, my. 
my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. Yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. When their judges are thrown over the cliff, then they shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As when one plows and breaks up the earth, so shall our bones be scattered at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes are toward you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass thy safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. We then continue with Psalm 103, which we'll pray responsibly by half verse. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commands. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works.
works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. And our final reading for the evening is from Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter. And Jesus said, So I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his <laughs> servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. This year, during our midweek, midweek Advent services, we're going to spend some time considering the three persons of the Holy Trinity. Three services, three persons, it, it works. Now, the whole business of the, the Trinity, one true God in three persons, one in three three in one, is a profound mystery. A mystery we believe and we even celebrate because that's how God has revealed himself to us in the Bible. As one God, Father, Son,
Son, and Holy Spirit, but not three gods, one God. And not one God wearing three different hats at different times, but one and three, three and one, all at once. And I suppose we could spend some time exploring a whole host of different analogies that different people have, uh, have offered to try to represent or to try to help us wrap our minds around the mystery, this profound, revealed truth of God. But my intention this year is not to wrestle with this mystery. It's to simply consider each of the three persons of the Trinity in their own and unique way. And so tonight, God, the Father. God as Father. Now this may be a pretty easy notion for most of you. He's in charge. He's loving. He provides. He guards. He protects. He, he looks out for us. And you know that God is the very best of what a father should ever hope to be. But you know, for some people, this notion of God as father is really quite problematic. And so, in our world today, there are many efforts to uh, well, to make God a little more gender neutral. Or to perhaps simply turn him into a woman or a mother. Or into just another it to neuter God, if you will. New Bible translations try this ploy, not wanting to embrace the notion of God as Father. You'll even hear many in our world today saying that, you know, really, a father is no longer necessary. But, uh, but you'll probably find that those who espouse such a view have quite a different agenda or a viewpoint. And yes, we have to be honest, there are some pretty bad fathers out there. And unfortunately, way too many children grow up with that as their model of fatherhood. But all fathers, all earthly fathers fall well short of the pattern established for us by our heavenly Father. Some fall so short that they end up giving fatherhood in general a bad name. But when we think of our Father, the Father, the who art in heaven Father, we are talking about the very, very best dare I say, perfect father. You know, on their good days, Ward Cleaver or Jim Anderson or even Uncle Bill from Family Affair couldn't, couldn't even begin to measure up. They can't come close. For just as the good shepherd that we know and cherish is the absolutely very, very best Shepherd, our Heavenly Father is the absolute very best Father. Unfortunately, in our day, fathers are often depicted on TV as kind of being the bumbling clowns that don't seem to be worthy or demand much respect. 
they've been shown this way. And so for many, especially younger folks, fatherhood might bring to mind things like <coughs> Tim the Tool Man Taylor, or perhaps that Raymond guy that everybody loves. Or, or, unfortunately, images of Homer Simpson or Peter Griffith may come to mind. Oh, for a return to the days of Ward and Jim. Father. Fatherhood, which goes hand in hand with father. Headship. Responsibility. Authority. Being loving. Sacrificing. Disciplining. Leading the way. Setting the example. All of these are elements of fatherhood. And they're all important even as we think about our Heavenly Father. But more important, but more important than most are even willing to acknowledge in our day and age, in our world today, about 50% of children are born to unwed mothers. A father, to be sure, biologically, but a father in the true sense of the world? The vast majority of our children don't have a clue of what that would mean. And children and mothers and fathers, they go hand in hand. And children study after study after study have shown, even in our world today, take their lead the most from what their father And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Now, as you read your New Testament, you'll often come across the, the word God. And the vast majority of times in the New Testament, it's referring to God the Father, the first of the three persons of the Trinity. And that makes sense, I guess, with Jesus kind of being in focus in the New Testament and Him being the Son. It, it makes sense that a reference to God would be to God, His Father, and ours, He tells us. And that, that, that name Yahweh, or that all caps Lord, that we find in the Old Testament is not simply a reference to God the Father. <coughs> so sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. But the Son and the Spirit, the second and third persons of the Trinity, are there in the Old Testament as well. So we must read and listen and understand carefully. <coughs> but the scriptural notion of God the Father develops around the very best of what should be understood as being fatherly. So it speaks, the Bible speaks, of the Father's great love, His steadfast and enduring Love, which knows no bounds. It speaks of his long-suffering nature, of godly discipline, of care and provision, and it paints a picture of an, of an, of an individual invested in the life of his children. Someone who is, is all about the welfare of his beloved children. A wise figure who looks out for and who acts. Who actually takes action.
for the well-being of his children. And so it's a fitting image, don't you think? And here's the really big thing. I alluded to it a minute or two ago. We, we are invited to call him Father. He our Father, we now beloved children. It is an endearing image. We are actually simply a part of his incredible creation. We are one of his creatures. But he would regard us as sons. <coughs> sons entitled to special concern and special blessings and inheritance rights and privileges. We can never earn it. We can never merit it. But it's how he graciously regards us. And while we typically associate creation with the Father, all three were there. But not three gods, just one. One amazing Father knows best, who unselfishly sends his only begotten Son to suffer and to die so that we might be regarded as sons. So that we might be rescued and redeemed from that which we truly deserve. He sent the one who would, who has reconciled a holy, holy, holy God with fallen man and made it possible for us to call his father our father. That's a big deal. And that is an incredible truth. Oh yeah, that doesn't mark the end of what he does for us, for he also sends us his Holy Spirit. He showers us with his Holy Spirit to affect our sanctification, our being made and being kept holy in God's eyes. Now that's a father who loves his adopted children, made his by the water and the word. It was all his plan, his work, his design, his love on display for his otherwise wayward creatures who are now regarded as sons, as children who can and who should think of and approach God as little children do to a loving father. You know, our last reading for tonight was uh, sometimes called the parable of the prodigal son. But maybe we should think of it as the parable of the loving father who couldn't even wait for his son when he saw him in a distance, <laughs> racing out to him and let the celebration begin because that's just the kind of of divine dad that we have. The son returns in humility and the celebration begins. So it is with our Heavenly Father. Amen. We continue with the hymn.
that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord and mercy for those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord and mercy for those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord and mercy for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord and mercy for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger and need, let us pray to the Lord and mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord and mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, Lord. We continue with the hymn.
Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Thank mm -hmm. you.